I tell you what we've, we've started with. It's Renishaw <coughs> Hall. Uh, it's from Derbyshire. Uh, it's a vintage Cuvée 2017, and it's the first wine for me of English Wine Week. If I can get it open, and I bet I can. I don't think any bottle's ever completely defeated me. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Derbyshire. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Mine's perfect as well. Ooh. Mine is perfect also. It's that moment when you think, shall I put my nose in and get froth all over my nose, or shall I just be patient for a few more seconds? Just, just be patient for a few more seconds. This is one of yeah. my favourite glasses. I know that wine buffs actually hate stuff like this, but this was given to me on my wedding day, and I shall drink from it until it cracks into a thousand pieces. So. It's actually my wedding anniversary today, Oz. Kieran? Yeah. Cheers to you. Yes, yeah, cheers to you. Yes. Here's to the start of English Wine Week, and here's to Kieran's wedding anniversary. Absolutely correct, in no particular order. Mm. So, what have you got planned afterwards, sir? Have you got a, a steak waiting for you, Kieran, or creme brulee, or whatever? Uh, <laughs> there is some steak and ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Charlie, so tell us about this, um, uh, about how you got involved in this English English Wine Week and. And what, tell us why we're doing this, because um, I love the idea that we actually go from the top the, of, of England right to the south. So you've got the most northerly uh, winery, you've got the most southerly winery and another half a dozen, it's another four in between. Yeah. Um, and just to show that the, this, uh, this English wine revolution is not a joke. Stuff can be made brilliantly from almost within sight of Hadrian's Wall to almost within sight of the Scilly Islands down in down in Cornwall and everywhere in between. Well, it, it, it's like a sort of, um, it's a, well, we are a wine growing nation on, on our own. And it's it, so many different styles, so many different soils, all in on our sceptered isle, you know, that, that, that's I, so different. And I think also, and I think it's so exciting that, you know, People are going, aren't going to go away this summer. And I think the opportunity for people to visit uh, these English vineyards, go along for a couple of days, stay in a B&B &B and have a bit of a trip round, it's, it's absolutely perfect. It's, yeah. it's, you know. and, and, and that's what I think. I think this whole thing about uh, um, local, if you can, but it doesn't yeah. have to be local. The, the lovely thing is uh, on the whole of this week, actually, it's wonderful. English Wine Week is nine days long. It's not seven, it's nine days long. Oh, um, it's almost French revolutionary long. Uh, they had 10 day weeks, I think, to try and get rid of Sunday. Um, but, but the point is, if you've got somewhere local, do go and visit it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And if you don't have somewhere local, think about, as you said, go to a go to a and b check into a pub, go and do some vineyard visits, begin to get, English wine into your soul, begin to get English wine into your veins. Uh, because, because honestly, as people who haven't been to an English vineyard and haven't realized what a wonderfully beautiful country we have, and yeah. the vineyards are making it more beautiful, not less, I think that they're missing a trick. And once, once you've been to a few of those vineyards, it, be it in Derbyshire or Leicestershire or Gloucestershire or Kent or Sussex or Hampshire, once you've been to a few, you will just long to drink more of those wines because uh, it's, it's to be honest it's the same if you go to a vineyard in france you go to a vineyard in germany or italy yeah. the ones you've been to are the ones that you love most and the ones that have there's an emotional sure. response because wine is about people it's about places it's about the sunshine it's about the wind and the, uh, the breeze on the hill it's about the cafe at the, the turn in the road at the bottom uh, it's about so many different things uh, as well as the, the taste and sometimes the taste is not as important as the experience of the place i i entirely agree i ent entirely agree there's so many places vineyards i've been to around the world you've got a, a different level of sort of enthusiasm, you know, there's certain places you go to in Champagne, it's so uh, which bus, which bus are you on, you know, which, uh, how many people are in your group? That's not like that in England. It's not absolutely like that. not. And I bet it's uh, bet not, not like that at Renishaw. Now this Renishaw, I, I think it's a fascinating operation because this was, this was actually planted by this chap called Sir Cheverell, Sir Sir Cheverell Rearsby 
sit well. Now, I thought there must be no one else in the whole history of the world who's ever been called Sir Chevrolet. But it seems that each generation, the sons are called Sir Chevrolet. That, uh, there's an excellent food writer called William Sitwell, and he's William Sir Chevrolet Sitwell. But Rearsby, surely no one's ever been called Rearsby before or since. But anyway, Sir Rearsby, as he seems to have been called, um, went, had, had a place in Tuscany, I think, went to Italy, and thought, oh, what a great idea. Why don't we actually have a little corner of, um, of Italy in North Derbyshire? And from what I can make out, he actually brought back Italian vines and he brought back an Italian winemaker. Uh, and I have to say, the idea, he put Trebbiano, I know he put Trebbiano in, and if he put things like Sangiovese in, just imagine, Sangiovese is tough enough in, in Tuscany. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Only what it was like in Derbyshire. And Trebbiano is famous for keeping a, a searing acidity even virtually in the middle of the Sahara Desert. So I sh I I'm, I'm astonished it ever became liquid, let alone drinkable in, in Derbyshire. But I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful idea. And, and I think that the idea that it was the most northerly vineyard in the world in the Guinness Book of Records until 1986 is, is also a lovely idea. It's 53 degrees and a bit north. But the crucial thing to me seems to be that it's in a walled garden. Uh, because uh, I've been in other walled gardens, places like Ickworth, uh, near Bury St Edmunds, where they had a beautiful, beautiful walled garden. And you walk into the walled garden, the temperature completely changes. Now, I believe it's supposed to be one degree warmer in the walled garden than further outside. It feels like 10 degrees warmer. You, get, you can feel the sweat breaking out on your brow. I was in Mount Stewart in, in, in Northern Ireland last year. Same thing winds and and sort of gusts all around us into this walled garden and suddenly you could be hundreds of miles further south uh, so i can absolutely see why uh, that that he would come and think i can ripen some grapes i just think he probably chose the wrong ones and i'm not at all sure um i i have read actually that his daughter said that the the, the wines uh, initially were 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 far better for for cleaning the the um the, the, the hooves on the horses than, than they were actually to drink. Well, so what, what do you I think, think of this wine? It's a classic English sparkling wine. It's yeah. absolutely delicious. Yeah, th um, this is a great way to, to, to start English um, wine week. Oz, you're a golfer. This is a bit like when you get your driver out on the first tee and smack the ball down the middle for 270 yards. Knowing you that, won't Johnny. savor that experience because it may not happen for a that. very long time. <laughs> but, okay, uh, Oz, I think not... let's move on to the rose, shall we? But just, just think about it for a moment. This is a really beautiful sparkling wine, and part of it is Sauvignon Blanc. And Sauvignon Blanc is a is a grape which a lot of people are quite rude about in England. And again, I just think don't be rude about the grape. It's one of those grapes that has uh, England is its place. It has a particular, slightly apple peely flavour, but this wine, the Renishaw, has been made with such skill, and and it's just managed to get that lovely the creaminess, which happens when the yeast sort of start breaking down, uh, and and you know how yeast is a creamy, slightly sour, creamy kind of con texture. Anyone who knows about bread making will know exactly what I mean. Yeah. And this one has got perfume, it's got creaminess, it's got lovely acidity, and it's got utter drinkability. And I would say. Well done, Renny Shaw, for this wine. So absolutely, great. absolutely. So um, moving on to the walled garden rosé. Slightly, slightly sort of darker in colour than the, because we're all sort of told that the, the lighter the colour, the better the rosé. This, so this hasn't got that sort of um, uh, pale Provence colour to it. But I think it's because a we've been told that, uh, and it's not. It's very. Oh uh, yeah, that's what we're told. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we're, we're told, told because those are the people who've got tons and tons of money to promote their Prov their Provence rosé brands. Absolutely. It's interesting. Elizabeth Gabe, who knows more about rosé than anybody else, she was saying only only this week that uh, the shortage of Provence rosé is a good thing because it means everyone can now go and drink rosés from further west in France, which have got about yeah. twice as much well, flavor. Well, drink and English rosé. English okay, rosé, like. oh, English rosé, English rosé, a step behind English sparkling wine is is I think we we got fruit perfectly suited for it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I, I, I would agree. You're completely right, and I think that uh, we should be making more top quality roses than we are, 
uh, and I'm hoping very much in the next few years, we're going to have to make more top quality rosé because the, the point about uh, something that's, that this, this one shows and all the others will show as well is in 2018 and 2019, millions of, 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 of grapes have come in which can't be made into classic method sparkling wine, which takes three, four, five years to sell. Cash flow means they've got to make something fresher, yeah. and cheaper and easier. And rosé, all that Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier has been, been planted, still rosé. I, I really hope that 2019 and 2020 are going to show still rosé taking off in quality because we should make some of the best rosé in Europe. OK, so... Um... Lovely nose to it, and you know, that's real quaff. That's a good, it's extremely uh, nice, yeah. It's very, very fruity. Um, it's got a little bit of a rasp. Um, I, I you can <coughs> taste uh, quite a firm acidity running through the wine. Um, there's no, there's no muscat in this, it's the black Hamburg or you have, yeah, you have the, the raid, raiding, raiding, raiding the, the glass houses. Yeah, uh, I've got about 600 kilos of muscat, which. Which ends up in here, so uh, six hundred kilos from the greenhouse. Uh, yes, one of the best memories, smell memories of my whole childhood, was our greenhouse at home. We used to grow black Hamburg grapes, and the Savoy used to come down once a year um, and uh, and buy them off us. And just before they were sold to the Savoy, I'd walk in there, and the air was almost difficult to breathe. The smell was so sultry and thick and scented just fantastic 